right, uh, another video for our series of every mechanic should know. And guys, this is a big one. You know how passionate I am about checklists. And uh, this is something we haven't covered yet, is the fact that our service manual is going to have information in different spots for us to be successful in completing one. So we'll just take a look at what we're doing here real quick. We're separating these crankcases. And we've got a tool attached here. It's going to press them apart. And to do that, we need to remove all the fasteners. On this particular engine, the fasteners are here on the, the left side. And what we're using is a microfish that's going to tell us what fasteners need to be taken out and the quantities. Now, what, we really, what we're really doing is we're using a service manual to tell us how to do it when we're un unsure, correct? Correct. And then uh, we're taking for granted, though, because we're using the microfish, what I believe is happening in class is we're not taking advantage of the actual pictures along with the print in the service manual. You'll see why in a second. So back here on the bench, you can see his bolts here for the crankcase and how many bolts are uh, how many bolts are represented as far as what had to be taken out. And what you'll notice here is there's part numbers four, five, and six. Do you see that here? Okay, so that means there's three different uh, lengths of bolts, and when you count those out, there's a quantity of, what was it? 11, okay? Now, what I need you to see right now, though, is right here, let's see, here and here, these two holes, does it look like something should go there? Right? Sure does, right? So, one thing that we do is we know as we're training, we take a look at something, and we draw that imaginary line across there. So what I want you to do is I want you to zoom in right here and see if you guys see a problem. Oh, do we got a problem? Oh, yeah. Okay. When we did our bolt count, we have 11 fasteners. So how in the world can there be a bolt in there? Is this, this kind of tripping anybody out? Not looked on the other side. Losing some confidence right now in the service manual and microfish. When I look at this imaginary line, do you see these humps right here? Mm -hmm. What do we call those? Back the camera up a hair. That's perfect. Do you see this bolt that's going through here? And you see this hump of this boss and this casting? Wouldn't that tell you that this bolt would go all the way through? Yes. When in doubt, take that fastener out. It's not me for that to run. Alright, <clears throat> now I'm going to have to do a ton of editing. <laughs> Cut this out. Alright, All right. so for this, this right here, we can tell that that has something underneath it. But we got to ask ourselves, where did we go wrong? We, we use the microfish. Let's zoom in here. No, perfect. We use the microfish. We got our 12 bolts out. Now when we look at the service manual, I want you to go ahead and zoom in right here. Remove crankcase screws. That's all we got. It doesn't tell us the quantity, doesn't tell anything else. Now, let me include this photo. Do you guys see something that's already off the motor? Let's do this. Can you see here where this has not been removed as compared to the photo? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna look at this service manual. From the beginning here, we're at transmission and crankshaft. If we look at the chapter, we're at transmission and crankshaft. Just back, that's good enough. Transmission and crankshaft, disassembly. And when I get through the manual, this is a checklist. Okay, notice up here, what does it say here? What's the very first one? That's where the information was that we would have taken out so when I go back to engine dismounting, okay, guys, look at as I go down through this list, everything take out the engine. Do you see where it says remove the drive chain? Yes. So in that step, back in chapter five, was where we took those bolts out. So when I get into the actual place on transmissions, and it says dismount the engine, I. What 5-1 means is I've already done all of the steps that were given to dismount the engine. Removing the cylinder, all of that stuff needs to be done per that. And notice how they even give us reference marks where to find the information? Yes. That's why 
you're gonna look at something sometimes in a service manual. In summary, what we're gonna find through our service manual usage is that prior steps are located in the manual. Make sense? Yep. And uh, you know, with, without digging into the manual so much, we talk about skills every mechanic should know, that's service manual usage, but of all the things on your lab sheet, would you agree that drawing your finger around those current cases is one of your best friends? Yeah. Here's what I'm proud of. I'm proud of the student for stopping, noticing something wasn't working right, it was being too hard, hey, we should take a look at this, and uh, we'll go ahead and get these off and we'll split the current cases. Hey there. Uh, one of the things uh, you know, I want to really summarize and get you guys to think about as you're training to be a mechanic or as you're learning new skills is that sometimes a lot of resources can be overwhelming. And one of the things we really realized today is the student's choice of which resource are they going to use. You know, do you, do you focus more on the manual? Do you focus on the parts fish? I mean, ideally, you think of the service manual as really the basis, and anything else you're going to add to make that job easier or to check yourself. Um, is a is something that's in addition to that service manual. So I encourage you always uh, really read through the read through the materials as a checklist. Uh, think about you know uh, there's there's one thing that we don't practice a lot here at this point in their training is efficiency and a, a lot of mechanics in the world just aren't going to have to go get all of these resources do one job correctly or or right. But for our guys you know and gals training and and practicing these are very useful resources. Uh, because not only are they practicing how to do it, they're also learning the theory behind it. You know, how does a transmission work? How does a clutch work? How does a, an engine work? So um, keep that in mind. I hope you enjoy the, the lesson here today that uh, some of the materials can be found in different areas of that service manual for you to be effective. Uh, use it all to your best advantage. Have a great one.